Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thanks for attending today's session on our first episode of Career Hub. My name is Janani Jairaman. I also have today's guest speaker here, Zoe Barnes. Uh, Zoe Mark Park, sorry. So I'm just trying to see if I have. Okay, yes, I have added everyone here. All right. I believe you guys can see me. Let's move on to the next slide. So she's our guest speaker for today. And this is our agenda for today's session. It's going to be in one hour session from 12 o'clock to one o'clock. So um, I would like to introduce our guest speaker today. Um, so she's a proud alumni and uh, she's also a blockchain technology and cybersecurity advocate. She started her professional career in supply chain consulting, then expanded her international career in Shanghai and San Francisco, where she worked for one of the biggest tech giant as well as small medium-sized tech startups. She found her passion in educating about the next generation internet, the so-called Web 3.0, so her skills in planning, in event planning, uh, led her to host like a lot of meetups for Google developing groups, organizing blockchain hackathons, and then um, events for crypto, underground SF, as well as moderating panels and startup events in Silicon Valley and Berlin. She is also a global head ambassador of events for the um, Polkadot network, as well as Women Tech Makers Ambassador. Her professional goal is to impact people and communities around her to make a societal and environmental impact in the world using leading technology trends. It's a privilege for me to welcome an international professional on today's session with me on 3.0. Hello, Zoe. Great. So can you see everything now? Nice. Thank you very much. Yeah, and uh, then also hello and welcome from my side. Um, good evening, I would say, because I'm actually, um, I'm saying hello from Berlin, from Germany. Um, as uh, Janen said, I'm an alumni, ITU alumni. I just finished my master in information and cybersecurity uh, in December, but uh, left the States and moved back to Germany, my, my home country, and now joining um, in, yeah, from Berlin. So I'm very happy to have you all here uh, and everyone that's joining later on or sees, uh, is going to see this, this um, recording. Also, um, yeah, very, very happy to, to, ex to share my experience today yeah, and kicking off this first episode of the uh, ITU Career Hub. It's a great initiative from ITU to, uh, first of all, invite alumni like me, but also other speakers and help you, you as a student at, at ITU to get um, informed about um, new indus or industries that you're interested in and get some tips how to get involved. Yeah, that's what I would like to talk about today, specifically about the Web3, Web3.0, um, which is called this, um, the, the new generation internet. And um, I would like to tell you a bit about my story. Yeah, what is the Web3? Actually, um, we are going a bit into the history of blockchain and crypto, yeah, which is a big part of the Web3. Um, and then I will just, yeah, explain you and uh, share with you my, my story, my experience, how I got there, where I am now, and where you hopefully already get a lot of information and, um, and some, um, yeah, inspiration to join this very exciting and really new industry. In the end, I would like to, of course, leave you with uh, some tips, yeah, and explain you how you can actually get involved in the community. So it's very important um, to understand the community. And um, yeah, these are these three points I would like to talk about. What is Web3? Yeah, the, the, um, the history about crypto and blockchain, the power of the community, how you can get involved. And then three tips um, that you can hopefully implement um, in your career search or um, in your activities when you're looking to get into this industry. Um, I know we have 40 minutes now to talk about um, that I give my, my presentation, yeah, but I would like to make it very interactive. 
Um, I have not that many slides, a lot of pictures you will see. So please feel free to raise your hand in between. Yeah, use the chat box. Uh, also, maybe introduce you shortly and let us know where you're joining from today um, that we get some conversation starting. And um, yeah, please feel free to ask a question in between. Yeah, I'm happy to, to uh, take some time after the talk to go into discussion. But if there's a question uh, in between, feel free to, to ask them. Um, so Janen already gave a, gave a great introduction. Just to give you a bit more background about myself. As I said, I did the uh, Master in Information Cybersecurity at ITU and finished uh, in, in December this year. But I have yeah, a quite diverse background, yeah, starting in supply chain consulting in um, my home country in Germany, in um, two different cities, was traveling already a lot, and then decided to, to go and explore the Asian market, where I also um, spent over a year to work, as well as continuing studying, um, really going into understanding the Chinese society Chinese um, history, as well as learning Mandarin to um, yeah, get around, right? Because in Shanghai, it's still um, a necessity to, to speak Mandarin or um, to at least say hello so that people understand you. Um, once I saw the, the Western side of the world, I would say I was okay, uh, the Eastern, I said, uh, I really want to do my master's uh, degree in the United States. I want to expand and see how, it's, uh, how business is made on the other side. Um, in the world. So I moved to Boston and I started my first master's degree in international business. Um, throughout my, my studies there, I was um, very, again, I had more business-like background, right? But I was very um, passionate about upcoming um, and innovative technologies. So I said, even business people need to understand a line of code yeah or they need to get familiar with technologies that are out there um, so I, I i saw a need to actually educate students um, on my business school to um to learn um, some programming languages or to give uh, speed uh, talks about um current um upcoming technology trends so this led me to actually found a um, tech club yeah, so basic technology club, but this was already my first step into this type of community building. Yeah, to take a leadership role on campus and saying I'm building this this club to educate business people about technologies. Back then, I was cooperating with um, bigger companies like IBM and Google, Salesforce, and we were inviting, or I personally invited some people from these companies to give speeches. Um, I um, organized conferences and um, yeah, even um, hands on workshops where I actually um, let students teach students, right? So this is always, um, again, the power of the community here already to see you have very smart people in, their, in your classroom. Why not give them the opportunity to educate other, other people? And this was so exciting for me that I said, okay, now I really need to dive deeper into the tech scene and I moved to San Francisco. And in San Francisco, I um, actually dived into the crypto blockchain community. I will speak about this in a, in a, in a later point, um, but this led me to work into se in uh, several startups in Silicon Valley. Um, I started also then my, my master's degree at ITU. Uh, before that, I worked for Google for some months and then ended up in a startup at um, a blockchain focused startup where I'm currently still project manage, uh, manager consultant, um, the startup called CryptoWork. And there we actually implement blockchain technology for bigger enterprises. Now I'm uh, yeah, in, in Germany and I joined a smaller company, also startup like um, MHIT and Service Scheme we have where I took the role as a chief operating officer. Very exciting to bring actually the um, yeah, Silicon Valley mindset as well as all my, my um, Web3 knowledge to an industry that's, um, uh, to a healthcare industry um, that has a lot of opportunities to be innovative or disruptive innovative. So very excited about yeah, the, the new chapter here starting in Germany and 
what I'm of course as I said before I have this passion for uh, and uh, blockchain technology so of course we can do this from anywhere and um, this is um, a big passion in my life I do in my free time So before we, um, yeah, actually dive into also some history and the, the topic, the Web3, I would like to give you some background. Yeah, what is the Web3? I think most of you or most of you might not have heard about this, um, yeah, the, the wording Web3. And it's actually called the next generation internet. Currently, we are living in the Web2.0 world. Yeah, the current internet as we know, as it's built, uh, interconnected computer network. We have um, companies like Google, Facebook, and so on. They, they, have, they play a big role in the current internet, um, but some things did not really work out as the initial internet was actually um, designed to be. To also give you some background, the um, Web3 or the current Web3 is um, at the beginning of its development. Yeah, so you can think about where we are currently with the Web3 movement is similar to um, where we have been with the, um, with the development of the internet in the late 1960s. Yeah, very exciting when the first um, internet computer network came out and people say, wow, um, I'm able to send an email. Yeah, or like things were starting to actually um, communicate via a computer. And this were really the beginnings of the internet. And currently with the Web3 movement, we are at the same stage. We are rebuilding, redesigning the infrastructure of the internet because some data flows that say were going to or started to become too centralized. And the, the, main, um, the main vision of the Web3 is to decentralize, yeah? decentralize the internet. So you can actually spread out the information and everyone, everyone that owns a computer or that wants to be part of it can join the internet as it's now, but also owns a part of it. Yeah, owning a part of your data and there with we already jumping into one of these big values of the web three is users own and control their data. Um, as you see on the slide, there are several values that the web three um, is holding, but I wanted to highlight only three of these values. And the most important one, or all of them are very important, but for me, I'm a very um, supporter of this type of value is users own and control their data. Yeah, very important, because this is not the case in the current internet. In the current internet, Web 2.0, we have big companies like Google, Facebook, Amazon, and so on, that are playing a very important role in the internet, yeah, and in infrastructure setup and everything we're using daily on a, on or yeah on a um, daily basis actually. But these companies own our data. Think about it. We are not we are not owners of our data anymore, and this is this is a kind this is scary to me, and um, to a lot of other people that are out there and working on this type of new internet. And a lot of people don't even know what these companies are doing with our data. And um, this is one part why the Web3 is going to be built to give the power or the users um, this power back to decide about their, um, their data, um, to create secure storage systems, as well as very secure sharing um, systems. You can share your data. And um, also to make people aware that this is a problem. So we don't want to say that the current internet is wrong, Web2. Yeah, it just evolved into a um, different side where actually the, what the actual value of the internet was not supposed to be. Yeah, we wanted to create a, um, a decentralized network, interconnected computer network. However, where it moved towards is a more centralized or it's centralized companies, centralized entities owning most of our data and actually can decide what's happening in the internet. 
So another uh, very important value is here to actually um, uh, yeah, decentralize the internet, right? Without a central control. And very important also is that all these um, inter, um, interaction you're doing, uh, transactions, whatever it is, communication, can be actually very uh, verified. And this is where the blockchain already comes into place because uh, the blockchain is a very important um, technology in the, let's say, infrastructure um, architecture of the Web3 that gives you the, the, um, the possibility to verify everything that's written onto the blockchain. And any data type, any data transaction communication point can be verified. And this not by a centralized party, but by a decentralized network. So everything that's written into the blockchain can never be changed. And this is very, very important um, to understand this that because um, it doesn't mean that um, everyone can see everything, but you, you always, um, you, you're giving the trust, let's say to a technology. Yeah, you don't have to trust a company or a person anymore. And you of course rely on it at one point, but you have an independent system that can um, verify any of your communication. So there are other um, values also here listed. And um, yeah, if you're interested uh, more in learning about the Web3, I'm happy to chat about it or just look it up. And um, this is also, um, yeah, this is th the new movement, yeah, the, the Web3 movement it's called. So um, not to bother you with uh, history because uh, it can be very dry. But I want to give you some, some background here to understand or that you can understand where we are again, yeah, and what, how the involvement actually um, um, happened in uh, specifically here in the Web3 movement, and blockchain and cryptocurrencies as well as crypto, um, uh, uh, cryptographic, yeah, the, um, is very um, main part here in, in this history. So in 1982, and uh, it's called Digit Cash. It's an um, yeah first digital money proposal um, provided by David Shaw, and this was the first yeah initial um, let's say proposal where you can actually um, sign a transaction with a digital signature. Um, you could sign a document and uh, with your digital signature. And uh, this could be verified, yeah. So you provide oh ownership. You provide ownership um, of the document with your digital signature. So you could actually prove in the end that you own something by um, uh, signing something. And this is uh, the first step into this digital world to say, okay, I own data by giving it uh, my digital signature. Um, this was, um, it still uh, required a type of centralization in this case, um, this proposal, but um, it also got commercialized as Diggy, Diggy Cash. <laughs> and um, it was tried out in a bank, yeah, that you could digitally um, sign documents and actually show that this is your, your document. Um, but it got actually later bankrupt, bankrupt this company. Um, however, it was a very successful first start. In 1997, yeah, um, we have now the hash cash from Adam Beck, which is also a cryptographic uh, mechanism. And you can understand it like this, that um, Adam Beck um, developed something where you say, um, uh, Alice sends Bob an email. Yeah, and to before Bob actually can read this email, his um, computer needs to ask Alice to solve a specific math problem. Yeah, and to send him the answer. So you actually say, um, before I um, trust you that you can that you can read this, this email, please also um, um, solve the specific math problem. So I can um, trust you that you sent me very important information. Yeah, this is important here to understand. When you want to send me something, I say, okay, here, solve this problem. This means you use already com um, computer power. So you do an effort to actually want to reach out to me, yeah? And this is the beginning also here to say, um, you have a proof of um, a proof of work. Yeah, if you have heard of it, it's also a mechanism that it's used in the, in the Bitcoin blockchain. 
um, where computers have to put work into something to actually um, execute a transaction. So this mechanism is used to actually avoid scam emails, yeah, because as I said, you have to solve a problem, you have to put in computer power before I actually read your email. And this means um, you, you are really sure to send me important information. And with this mechanism, you can actually exclude spam emails. And Adam Beck back then already, or let's say uh, in the later age, called Bitcoin is a type of hash cash um, extended with inflation control. Yeah, very, very nicely said, because as, as, as I explained before, Bitcoin is using this proof of work mechanism. However, Bitcoin has much more, um, or let's say, yeah, features, if you want to call it like this, that the technology actually lets you also exchange um, value, yeah, via this, via this technology from one account to another, where the Bitcoin currency is the main, um, the main use case on the Bitcoin blockchain. So now we are moving into 2009, um, a very exciting year because then the first Bitcoin Genesis block was mined. Um, and, yeah, by um, Satoshi Nakamoto, if you've heard of this name, um, the founder of the Bitcoin blockchain. However, until today, we don't know if this is a person, a man, a woman, a group of people. It's very mysterious, which um, yeah makes a whole, let's say, the, the, um, the birth of the Bitcoin blockchain still mysterious because we don't know, we don't know this person. However, this person has... Um, um, published a lot of papers, of course, the white paper of the Bitcoin blockchain, as well as some email conversations are still out there and um, you, you just know about the name. 2015, also an exciting year, now Ethereum comes up. The Ethereum blockchain, the second um, biggest or well-known public blockchain. Um, here also the difference, you have private blockchains, public blockchains. And Bitcoin and Ethereum are the two biggest um, public blockchains out there. And Ethereum wanted to um, do something different. And actually, the two founders of Ethereum, um, Gavin Wood and Vitalik Buterin, um, they understood the Bitcoin blockchain, the white paper, but they said there's something missing. Yeah, we cannot use this technology currently to, to build applications or to let other people interact as well as um, uh, build on it. And it's such a powerful technology that we have to use it further. So Ethereum was built in 2015 um, to actually um, allow users to build applications on top of it. And it's still currently the biggest community out there that um, allows um, developers to build decentralized applications, so-called dApps, decentralized applications, which make you, um, yeah, which helps users um, or developers to build a, an application on a decentralized network. 2020, also, um, let's say one of my favorite part here is the Polkadot launch, um, because yeah, as you heard, I'm personally a, um, the head ambassador or global head ambassador of events for the Polkadot network, which means that I'm organizing online events um, and um, yeah, educating about Polkadot and um, promoting this, this type of blockchain. So Polkadot was born in 2020 and can be seen as a meta protocol of blockchains. Yeah, it's, um, it's a multi-chain interchange and um, has a translation architecture, which um, enables uh, blockchains to communicate with each other. And this is so, so innovative um, that Polkadot is called the, the blockchain of the blockchains. Yeah, this is, um, it's just mind blowing that um, someone now um, or people, a group of people made it happen to actually, um, to actually make uh, it happen that blockchains can communicate with each other. So there are several blockchains out there, like thousands of blockchains because every blockchain is solving a different purpose, um, but they never could communicate with each other. And Polkadot now um, makes this happen, and it actually is the most robust platform 
for security, scalability, and innovation. Interesting side uh, note here is also that Polkadot was founded by one of the founders of Ethereum. So you already know that there's a lot of knowledge transfer coming from the Ethereum community to Polkadot. And um, yeah, it's a very, very um, innovative and just um, special uh, technology because uh, Polkadot is, is the next generation of, of, of the blockchains and they actually combine or solve a lot of problems that are currently out there that blockchain still bring with, with it. Because remember, we are still at the beginning yeah, of building and redesigning the internet. So um, as I mentioned in the beginning already, the community in the blockchain space is super, super important. Yeah, and there's this power of community. Um, and here's a nice quote from Helen um, Keller. Alone, we can do so little. Together, we can do so much. And this is, yeah, I mean, it brings it to the point that communities, with the community, you're just, you're so much stronger, right? We know this. You have just um, a much more, a bigger um, uh, reach, uh, reach globally, yeah? You need the community in the decentralized world. You need the community to actually build a decentralized network. Yeah, you need computers decentralized around the whole world, world um, to build a decentralized network, to build the Web3. So here is really the power is the community. And everyone is welcome in this community. Yeah, this is also um, something I would like to give, um, yeah, as, give you as a tip in the end also to, to let you know, um, anyone can actually join the community. You don't need to be afraid to um, have specific skills. Um, or let's say only blockchain specific skills, um, you can come with, um, with your personal skills. So here's just a little story how I got involved in the, in the blockchain uh, space. I came to San Francisco and I actually joined or um, yeah, moved into a crypto community, a crypto house. Here is uh, some of my roommates. And here's uh, the first picture. It says, you also see the sign here in the back, Bitco Bitcoin accepted, because some people were um, paying the rent with Bitcoin. Very exciting. And all these people in this community were um, entrepreneurs, yeah, um, focusing on blockchain, of course, and building some of their startups in, in the space. I was also joining a um, project focusing on social impact, built on, on blockchain and um, yeah, this was my entry actually to understand and um, get, yeah, get um, very impressed by the technology, by the people also, because it's a new technology and um, a lot of young people are actually leading um, this, this community and the space. Because it is so disrupting and so new, um, it's somehow, I would say, maybe even scary to a lot of older um, or like they say the generation above us, our parents might not um, know yet um, what this type of technology blockchain specifically can bring. And again, as we are so in, at the beginning of this, of this movement, also the user interfaces are not there yet. Yeah, so it's very difficult to explain something you cannot show, um, but therefore um, a lot of people that have actually the ability to think and to imagine how these things can be built are part of the community. So um, another uh, step I, I, um, yeah, I took, let's say, once I joined the crypto community or this crypto house, I was traveling a lot and I was um, joining a lot of conferences. Um, there are, yeah, as I think in any in industry, a lot of conferences around the world. And the, um, the crypto community, again, is a global community because we, I would, I would yeah, define us as um, global citizens, right? As our generation, we have the ability to, to fly um, to, to any country. Currently, of course, we are in a, different, in a different time through the pandemic, but actually in normal times, we have the ability to fly to any place we want. Yeah, we can, um, we, we are flexible in taking any, any transportation model, but also um, we speak English, we can get around anywhere. And our parents maybe did not have the ability. So this community now in the, in the crypto space is very 
um, global. And you see a lot of people coming or traveling around for, for these type of conferences. So this is um, one area where I made a lot of connections with global um, or with people from around the world. Um, here's a picture from one uh, conference in Vegas. Very exciting, my first time in Vegas, um, which was cool because throughout the day I was at the conference and of course learning a lot and did networking, but in the end you can explore Vegas and just have some fun. And this is actually something I love about conferences because you learn and you get a lot of input throughout the day. And in the evening you, you connect and you um, yeah have, have fun. And um, through having a beer maybe with, with someone you also get connected on a different level. So how I got involved actually in um, the community, um, specifically in Polkota, I explained to you, or just uh, said that I moved into this community, was very involved in the community in San Francisco, but then I wanted to found the, a specific project. And Polkota actually gave me the opportunity to, yeah, provide my skills into this, into this uh, community as I um, got Oh, I actually met one of my one of my friends at the uh, Stanford blockchain conference. They also have every year a very big conference. I can you guys just recommend it's uh, it's actually for free for students, and um, you meet the highest people from the space there. Yeah, I think it's actually in February this year. It was last year. It was in February this year. Of course, I don't think um, it will happen, but maybe online. So check this out: the Stanford blockchain conference. And um, even one of the founders of the Ethereum blockchain was there, Vitaly Kuturin, a very, um, yeah, one of the biggest uh, person actually in the space. And uh, my friend asked me if I, um, yeah, would like to uh, be involved in a Polkadot ecosystem and to organize some events. And I back then did not know too much about Polkadot, but I heard about it and I was um, very impressed again by the technology. So I said, I would love to join. And um, this was actually very fast way up there already um, to, to first of all understand how I can get involved and to explain more people about the community, how they can get involved and to, to uh, provide and create impactful events for the community. So I joined as a ambassador for um, a general ambassador. And the interesting thing is that all of this also, um, yeah, of course, is handled digital or online, right? We have a lot of online um, community channels. Polkadot, for example, has channels on, on Discord, on Riot. It's a decentralized chat application. Telegram, also a very important application used in the crypto space, but not too much anymore because it's, um, there are a lot of spammers. Um, yeah, I think these three, so Riot, Discord, and Telegram are um, big, big channels. Where you can always find uh, specific communities from, let's say, the Bitcoin community. You can find Ethereum developer community, Polkadot community, or any other blockchain or project you're interested in. You can join this community to get involved already and to understand what the project is actually about. So. Um, Actually, six months later, I got um, promoted, or three months later, I got promoted to the senior ambassador. And then Polkadot restructured the, the um, yeah, let's say the ambassador um, program. And now I'm the um, global head of events um, ambassador for the Polkadot event, uh, Polkadot network, which means that I am responsible to have other ambassadors or candidates or people that are interested in doing events. Um, of course, you have to go through a specific process um, to give them ability and support to host events for, for Polkadot. And yeah, this is just another um, screen um, that shows you some screenshots of um, the events I have hosted so far for Polkadot. Um, and again, what I want to show you here with is actually you can come into any community um, with the specific skill. Yeah, you don't have to be a developer or um, overall a techie or a security specialist. This community, yeah, any community in the Web3 um, movement has so many possibilities because it is a new, in, a new industry. So I joined with the ability or with the passion also to, to educate, to create events 
and specifically here to host fireside chats. So what I'm doing is um, laying out a specific topic, explaining, for example, about the Polkadot architecture and interviewing someone that has actually built the architecture. And then I'm asking specific questions to this person and also, of course, um, including the community. But you, if you're interested in joining the, the community or getting into this industry, of course, first of all, I would, um, I would suggest you to um, join a specific project yeah, to get um, to connect with people. It helps, of course. You can then, um, this was my part, um, once, you're, once you made your name in the community by bringing a specific skill, for example, um, doing events, um, doing designs, yeah, doing uh, marketing for them, or um, writing some blog posts. It's a lot of things are possible here. Um, once you yeah, put your name out there, um, a lot of jobs are coming up also through the community. Because think about it, these, these, these companies, they of course want to hire people that know about their technology. Yeah, and they put out um, job, um, let's say open po positions, first of all, to the community because they want to have firsthand um, or they, they give the priority to people that actually contribute to the, to the technology and that are really doing things with love. They do it uh, from, um, as a on a volunteer basis. So this is always the, the very good uh, yeah, strategy to get into um, a specific company and um, to find out, for example, who is building the blockchain. Am I interested in, in joining this company that builds the blockchain or that maybe does marketing for it or um, for, let's say, a specific uh, blockchain now? Or do, am I interested in um, doing business development? Yeah, What companies are doing business development for uh, maybe several companies or um, is there a specific blockchain focused company that's looking for business development skills? So just um, keep in mind that any type of positions, of course, are, are also searched yeah, in, or looked for in this industry. You still need marketers, very important. You need to explain a technology that's, um, again, doesn't have has too much um, usability. Yeah, There's not, not too much UI or platforms out there that actually um, make people or users use the technology because we are very early in, in this in the stage. Um, but you still need also designers to develop user, uh, user interfaces. You need uh, developers. Of course, here it gets a bit more tricky because um, you mainly or mostly need some blockchain specific development skills. Yeah, you need to um, maybe for Ethereum, Ethereum has a specific development language called um, Oh, now I forgot it actually at this moment, um, but they have a specific um, uh, development knowledge. Okay, it's not coming to me, but um, no, <laughs> maybe later I never write it in the, in the chat um, or just some other combinations yeah, of, of, of um, some skills that um, can, be, can, can be learned though. Yeah, there are a lot of, um, let's say, programs or classes out there also online how to how to learn specific um, um, development skills for um, to become a blockchain developer and um, yeah this is more on the on the techie side yeah when you really want to get into it uh, solidity right now it came to me solidity is the development uh, language you need or the programming language for ethereum to actually be able to write smart contracts yes smart contracts is a uh, one application on top of a blockchain, if you have heard of it, it that actually makes it possible to execute a contract digitally without any middleman. Um, yeah, so this to, to, to the opportunities. And I'm already coming to my last slide here to leave you with um, three tips I found very interesting or um, very important to, um, yeah, for you to actually get into this get into this industry. First of all, we have, um, I think this is a, um, a point that's very important for any also general career advice. Yeah, be proactive. Be proactive means like um, um, go, go out and network. You have to, to be able to network, you have to be proactive. You have to find out some events. Um, Online events, of course, now is possible. A lot of conferences have um, uh, digital or are hosted on platforms which 
also give the opportunity to actually network on the site. So be proactive and find uh, specific uh, meetups, online events you would like to join and go out and network and write people or go to LinkedIn and um, check people that are on uh, working on a specific company you're interested in. Feel free to connect with me and um, I can guide you and um, yeah, um, propose maybe other companies that might be interesting for you. And, but you have to do something for it. Yeah, a general career advice here to be proactive and use your network for it. Think big um, is also part here, which is, I would say, more specific to, to the Web3 environment, this blockchain industry, because you need to have the ability to imagine things that are not there yet. Yeah, remember that we are building the next generation internet and we are building um, a decentralized world. So there are things, there are um, yeah, pro products need to be developed that, that, haven't, that haven't been used before. And user interfaces need to be developed that are just not there yet. And um, therefore I'm saying think big because you need to bring a, an ability like you have uh, the yeah, developers have mainly the ability to solve problems. Here you have to um, bring the, or need to bring the ability to think big and think out of the box and really imagine things. Um, let's say you can even be crazy to imagine things, how things could be how things could happen and work with each other. Yeah, um, you can go into detail here because the whole blockchain technology is also um, has a specific tokenomics around, which means you have to understand how actually tokens can be used to transfer value, what can be used with them and so on. So we can go um, yeah, into a, a whole different world here. But this is a very, um, yeah, a major point I want to give you um, or to let you, um, yeah, to let you know about that you have to bring this ability. Join online communities. Yeah, I've told you about my story, how I got into the industry and um, what other abilities or communities are out there. Any, every blockchain project actually has an online community. And again, if there's any project you're specifically interested, interested about, um, contact me and I try to help you to find a specific Telegram channel or um, the, the Discord channel and so on. But this is the first, let's say the first entry point for you to get involved because you don't need to apply for anything, right? You just click and join the community and you directly know what's going on. You can join specific uh, tech-based um, channels yeah where, where developers are asking questions um how to maybe pull up a node or how to um, verify specific transactions or you join other channels that are more focused on on events or um, general business questions about this this project you're interested in the, uh, the third point is here to get creative and this is something i mentioned already before to not be afraid um or yeah, feel like I don't have specific blockchain skills, I cannot enter this, this community or this space. You can, yeah, but therefore you have to be creative and go inside and think, okay, what is my um, very good skill? Am I a good public speaker? Should I do maybe events or do I want to connect people? Am I um, a great designer? Yeah, do I have very cool skills to design um, flyers or maybe some gifts, yeah, some other, um, Cool, cool pictures and things, stickers that can be used um, for the, by the community. Or am I, again, do I have any specific tech skills? Yeah, I can join and become a developer and get um, also incentivized because most of these communities pay you back with a specific cryptocurrency. So this is also a nice side, side note that once you join a project, um, you get, you do of course some work on the site and maybe um, yeah, let's say not against uh, fiat, yeah, the current, uh, the current money, but you get, first of all, um, get, um, get back connections. Yeah, you, you are in the network, you can build your brand and you also get paid sometimes, but with, current, uh, with cryptocurrency. And this is another way to get involved into it and to learn about it. Yeah, I've heard, I have heard one, one big event with the COO, um, CEO, of a company that's actually developing Polkadot. And for this event, I got 25 Kusama. Yeah, Kusama is a cryptocurrency. And one Kusama currently, I think, or some weeks ago was $50, one coin. 
Yeah, imagine what what um, amount of money they if you see it like this they they gave they gave me for as a reward. But I actually saw it like wow, I now have this currency, and I can participate in the network. Yeah, this is another another topic now. How you, what you can actually do with these tokens and with this cryptocurrency. But they they really liked my my contribution to the community that they reward me with um, with their cryptocurrency which I in the end can use again to participate in the community and vote on specific proposals and so on. But again, for you to, um, to join, um, get creative, yeah? Think about your skills. They don't need to be specific um, blockchain skills. They can be um, also sales skills and business development and so on. And um, yeah, then, then try to, to find a project you're interested in. And as I said, I would really love to, to stay connected um, to yeah, help you guys if you have any questions in general about the Web3 movement, about a specific project. Um, yeah, let's, let's stay connected via LinkedIn, Twitter. You can follow me. I post also a lot of events there that I'm hosting. And um, yeah, so, so you can continue to learn. And I would love to help you also or recommend you and connect you with any people in the space you you feel like um, you would like to yeah, learn more about.